buonasera a tutti. Siamo qui collegati per la prima conversazione del 20, della 27 edizione di Sguardi Altrove Film Festival. E la prima delle conversazioni intitolate Le altre, conversazioni su diritti mancati, mestieri e scenari per un futuro sostenibile nel cinema e nelle serie tv, è con una pluripremiata produttrice americana, eh, Browning Cornelius, e la donna dietro al film successo della critica al Sundance Film Festival. Continueremo in inglese, so, hi Browning, it is a Hello. pleasure to have you here. I think like all the Italian. Thank you, Marcia. It's lovely to be here. I wish oh, we could I wish we could all be together in person, perhaps yes. next time. Yeah. So I, I will I will start from the past. Because okay. as I was saying in Italian, you you are an awardee producer and your last success is from, from the Sundance Film Festival. But I'm curious how you started. How was that girl, that young woman, dreaming about film? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I've always loved film and I always dreamed of being in entertainment from when I was probably about three to five years old. I just was always fascinated by the, the magic of performance and of cinema. And um, it's been a, a long and winding path. I was a... a I uh, was an actress. I worked in the studio system for a line producer when I was in my mid-twenties, which really was a wonderful film school that ended up being my film school because it was like this on-the-job on training. And ultimately, after many years and other business experience as well, and I believe that all of my life and business experiences are a great asset to film producing. And then about... 12, 13 years ago, I decided to embark as an independent producer. And I originally started in producing to create vehicles for myself as an actress, because I didn't want to wait for my agent to call or for wait to book a job, which is, you know, incredibly challenging. And then all of it is a very competitive industry. And once I started to produce even shorts and then features, and I would produce an entire feature just to get one scene for myself. And I realized that I loved producing and it brought together these many different aspects of my life and my experience and was incredibly rewarding. And that I had a lot more control over the, not necessarily the outcome, but to actually do the work. I didn't need to wait, wait for anybody. And I found that incredibly inspiring. And so I was fortunate enough, as I said, I did have the background and, and training. And I, I always recommend people get any kind of experience on set, even if it's going and being an extra or being a, an assistant on set, anything where you can go and observe and learn about it and meet people is, is always going to be beneficial. Um, and then about eight of us, went and made a micro-budget independent feature, as I said, about 13 years ago, and it was a sort of a grand experiment. And in determination and drive, which everybody on the team did, it showed through in the final work. And I think people could feel that. And fortunately, it ended up launching my producing career. It did, it ended up winning the South by Southwest Film Festival in 2009 a film called made in china and then it's just continued from there okay tell me if i'm wrong but i feel your story is really inspiring also because you discovered what producer is along the way because you know you talk about being on set really feel the work and coming from being an actress then to be a producer it is, you know, you, you have really experienced a, a different things in uh, the same field. Yes, def okay. definitely. And I think that that has been a great asset because I think as a producer, if you have experience and an understanding for all of the different departments, even um, like I, I remember 
volunteering basically to work on a film in the wardrobe department once because I wanted the experience of what was that that was like and I spent most of my time steaming clothes and doing returns and I had already produced films by this point but I wanted to know and understand what the department's like or hanging out in the makeup and hair trailer and and really sort of like getting a sense of how each department works I think is a, a great asset for a producer because then you get a different understanding of putting the pieces together. And then there are obviously there are many different kinds of producers, but as a creative producer and somebody who was interested in, I like running a set. I like being there um, every day when a project is shooting so that I am, I'm part of it. And that also we can sort of, you know, it illustrates to the team that we're all in, in this, you know okay. we're all in this together and i think that when you do have that understanding it's a great asset there is something that you discovered along the way about this work uh, that you didn't know but that really surprised you because usually when we talk about uh, schools and schools for uh, students that want to be director or actress yeah, for film school, yeah. the producer is always in the corner is always you know the one that comes later but at the end of the day it is you know the first one believing in a film so what what do you think what changed you doing this this new role um as far as how i ended up stepping into the world of producing or yeah. being more hands-on. Um, uh, that's a good question. I, I think that I, I really enjoyed the collaboration and, and all film is collaboration. I mean, it's a team, Every, everybody mm -hmm. from the director and the actors to the, to the PA, you know, the person changing the, changing the light bulbs. It's like everybody is essential to getting a, a film done. Um, but I like the sense of camaraderie. I like the sense of family. I like the sense of everybody being in it together. Um, and that is something that excites me and that's, in, that's important to me. And then the other thing I think about being a producer is people who like puzzles, people who like putting things together and figuring, you know, you're at A and you need to go to Z and how do you get there and fi figuring it out that I find very invigorating and inspi inspiring and I think that that's important for producers to enjoy because a lot of the job of a producer is constantly solving problems you have to like solving problems if you don't don't be a producer <laughs> okay okay and talking about the Sundance and clemency uh, tell us more about the film and when you felt it was the good, you know, the good film to fight for? Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Yes, so I was fortunate enough for the film, a uh, film that I produced and developed called Clemency to win the Grand Jury Prize at the 2019 Sundance Film Festival. And Clemency has, we've been fortunate to have extraordinary success with that film which has been a real gift because it was a fight that was a film definitely as you say to to fight for when i first read the script um which was four to five years before we filmed i think I, I think four years before we filmed it was such a unique perspective and it was such a unique story and the writer director had put a lot of her life um, into authenticity you know so she had she had gone and she had worked on clemency campaigns for for people that were on death row she had started a program in, in women's prisons and all of that authenticity was on the page and rather than it being a sensationalized version of a prison movie and the sort of like a hollywoodized version of what we often see it was this very unique and authentic perspective. And then also um, for the film, the filmmaker as a voice, I felt that she had an interesting voice and I'm a, a big supporter of 
female filmmakers and female content creators and just overall supporting diverse voices. And um, for all of those reasons, it felt to me that it was a project that was worth fighting for. It, the, the challenge with that is all of the reasons that I wanted to get involved or all of the reasons why Hollywood was not getting involved with okay. it. It was a very difficult one to um, finance and put together because it, it didn't have all of the, the, the sort of like splashy or star elements to it. But fortunately, everybody that we got involved from our lead actress, Alfre Woodard, who came on early on, and all of the other, the cast and, and the crew were incredibly passionate about it and committed to the project and they brought their absolute all to it. And we found some, um, we were fortunate to find some bold financiers who understood the importance of the message and were looking to get into film. And it just, it after fighting for it for so long, the, the sort of, all of the, the elements of the universe aligned. And I think again, back to that passion, it was all brought to the film. And I believe that that is what you end up seeing on screen. And okay. you see that it was a labor of love. And I think when you fight yes. for a project so hard that that's um, often one of the benefits of the results mm -hmm. that you get. Which I guess was really challenging because I can say for the viewers, we talk about the execution system in the US, and so it is really in the news. So I can imagine that fighting for a film like this in that moment, in this moment we are living, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't no. easy. It wasn't. And the issues around mass incarceration and around the death penalty, they're, you know, they're very controversial. Um, they're dark and dramatic. And there are things that a lot of the stories, that particular story and stories like that about these very important issues, um, often people don't want to talk about them. That happens in the background, but they want to ignore it. They don't, they, the society, people don't really want to address the fact that that's going on and the issues that that's, that is creating in, in our society and communities. And by making films like Clemency and a lot of these important films that, that are out there that are in that vein, it is, it is the, um, I guess it's the, it's, it's the mission and it is the job of, of filmmakers and passionate filmmakers to make sure that these stories are seen. It's to bring them into society, into the film festival and say, stop, look, this is what's happening in our society. This is how we are impacting people. This is how we are treating people, pay attention. And okay. it's a, it can be very challenging for audiences to watch films like that. They're incredibly affecting, but they're incredibly important. And then, the I, we've been fortunate with clemency and i hope this is the case for many films like it is that it's not just a piece of art and it's not just entertainment but it is an actually a tool for social change it's a tool to help ignite um, ignite conversations around social justice and force us to look at ourselves as um, individuals and communities we can say you are i can say you are not only a producer but you produce film for social issue. Have you always yeah. been like this? Or you discovered along the way something changed in your life? Well, no, no I, I definitely have always, there's always been an element of, of it needing to be something that promotes change. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the story itself. Like the first film, um, that I produced, and I think the, the certainly the first three or four that were female writer directors, and it was incredibly important to me because women being underrepresented in the entertainment and the arts and as filmmakers needed a voice, and so the social issue was ensuring that women's voices are heard. They were that they were heard and that they are heard, and and being part of that initial push of ensuring that there were more. Um, women's films getting getting made and so okay. that was an initial mandate and as I say so that was sort of its own social issue and then I definitely gravitate towards projects 
that some sort of message in them that can come in the form of comedy or drama um, because you can you know you can talk about a lot of issues through yeah. comedy and start to make people aware of them and that that can have just as much impact and sometimes it might have more impact because you hit a wider audience of people whereas if it's a very heavy social issues drama it may be that you have a smaller audience or the people that see it already believe in a certain way. Um, I think that they are both equally important, but there's, oh, with all the projects that I do, there will be some reason there, you okay. know, some sort of social reason. There's a film that I just produced during lockdown, which is a comedy horror film. And people might think that that that's a totally far cry from what I do from, you know, social justice and social issues. But actually it wasn't because it was in a time of fear and uncertainty. And it was very important to me to figure out what innovative and creative ways for us to keep yeah. our art alive, to help keep our filmmaking industry alive. And, um, you know, even to find ways of sort of like bringing joy and laughter to people. So there can be different elements, but it's like what speaks to a producer as an individual as to what and why um, they feel the necessity to get behind a project. And talking about unrepresented women in the entertainment system, what do you think it is the state of today of this problem? What, a lot of changes, I'm sure, but what do we need to do more? Um, First and foremost, I think that w women need to just get out there and, and make movies. They need to know and believe that they can. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to be challenging because it is going to be challenging, um, but just fight to get the film made. It's, you get different perspectives when you have a female filmmaker. Um, you may even, you're, you're even going to have different stories that are chosen often if it's a female filmmaker. And considering that I think at least half of the world's population is women, it's, a, it's essential that we are not only represented, but that we're creating content that is going to, to resonate with, um, with other women around the world. Um, so as I said, I think first and foremost, it's a matter of like, get out there. Yes, it's going to be hard, but do not take no for an answer. Um, most independent producers and most people in, you know, whether it's a, you're a writer or a director or an actor, most people in the entertainment industry have to do something else to pay their bills while they are working up and while they are building their resume. So, you're, you know, if it's, your, if it's your hobby, if it's your passion, if you're working just to pay your bills, but what you really want to do is filmmaking, just put all of your extra time, energy, into, you know, and, and resources into that and keep going. It might take you five, 10, 15 years to get to where you want to be, but if you love what you're doing and you're building a resume and you're building a network of contacts, then it's worth it. But I think that it's also really important for all filmmakers, you know, women, all filmmakers to understand that it is the, it's the long road that you're getting on. It's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's your life's work. And some people will get into the industry and realize into the entertainment industry and realize that it's not what they thought and not where they want to be. And, and that's fine too, as long as you've sort of given it a try. But I think anybody that aspires to be a producer, um, go out and give it a try. There are no barriers to entry. Money is the barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. That is what you need to produce a film. And, but you can, Produce if, if you find a group of passionate people and it's just a matter of being able to sort of feed them and have the equipment, a lot of people will work on these, on, on these shorts or on these films for very little money because everybody is working towards the same goal and everybody is creating their art. Okay. Um, so just, I think it's important to know that, that there are communities and filmmaking communities and acting communities and people that are wanting to be pulled together to collaborate and and create film and to create art and tell these yeah. stories. And since, tell me if I'm wrong, but since it is started to be a real conversation, women filmmakers, I think we are still behind with the produce, producer, female producer. 
and, and that we don't think? have enough and that we don't have enough of them yeah what what do you think absolutely absolutely we don't have enough female producers we don't have enough producers of um you know color there we need far more overall diversity in in filmmaking we absolutely need more female filmmakers there was a study recently if not today that came out about that there are more women directors and producers than ever before but that doesn't mean that there's enough and it certainly doesn't mean that we are at parity and that we have sort of you know half of half of the voices and half of the stories it's still um it's less challenging now to get a film finance that's made by a woman but for many many years and maybe even until like this year a lot of companies and a lot were they said oh it's too difficult women women's movies don't do well women uh. movies made by women don't do well women uh, stories that are focused on women don't do well and that was mortifying and it's not necessarily true mm -hmm. in fact it's not true we know that it's not true and now it's being proven that it's not true but we need the executives and we need the financiers and we need the studio heads and the networks to ensure that they are funding female driven and female helmed content where the producers the director the stories are female focused but we need the financiers and the distributors to invest in those projects to understand that it is a necessity and it's not even about doing the right thing it actually makes economic sense if you make it they will see it if you make one and it doesn't do well there are plenty of films by men that don't do well but you know so that's yeah. just an an unfair argument and yeah. we we need to fight for that and we need i think also it's like we need to find obviously male advocates of women and also that women need to stick together women need to support other women Yeah. in in all aspects of of uh, filmmaking and financing of the content yeah. also because one of the biggest cliche is that all of the film ba made by women have to talk about women issue which is which is not true clemency um, is the biggest example you know <laughs> They, uh, that is absolutely true and women need to be given the opportunity to direct action films or horror films or big broad comedies and um that is absolutely true they don't it doesn't have to be um a film about women by a woman uh, by a, by a woman women are fully capable of di of directing anything any story about anybody do you feel any difference from hollywood US where you work and Europe talking about the entertainment industry about this issue or do you think we all live in the same world um no i th i do think that sort of hollywood in the united states is okay. is different and one of the main differences i would say is that we in the us we don't have these um programs and grants and that are supporting filmmakers and that are supporting okay. the arts um for i think that you're fortunate in europe and there is definitely a push with these various programs and grants uh that are supporting and and that now have to support female filmmakers and there is a mandate to support female filmmakers and so i'm sure i i encourage all of the female producers watching and filmmakers watching to ensure that they're aware of different programs in their countries right. um like the BFI in England who I'm very very familiar with that are supporting new voices and supporting the arts we don't have that as readily in the US it tends to be more in private equity and you have to go through the traditional system um which makes it all the more challenging okay. because you have to start you have to start somewhere and if you can only go out and find private monies um and sort of like equity investors it can be um it, it can be even more challenging okay um and if you can reveal if you are working on something and how changed your life as producer during pandemic times Um I am working on many many things. Okay. I have a number of of film and television projects in various 
stages of development. And then, as I mentioned, I have the one that we filmed during lockdown, which we actually just completed and is going to go out uh, uh, for sales imminently. Um, most of my projects continue to be female, female led and or female, right, you know, writers and, and directors. As I said, I'm sort of like focusing on overall diverse voices and ensuring that we get different perspectives out there. Um, yeah, so I have, a, a, I would say half a dozen, so, so six TV shows and six films that, I, that I'm doing, including a couple of films in the young adult space. One which I will actually be directing, which I'm very excited about. Okay. Um, so we hope that that is going to fill, film next year. And so, yeah, stay stay tuned. But the as far as during lockdown, how it has changed is, I've been fortunate that I've still been able to very actively develop projects. So okay. that whether that's working with writers, whether that's working with managers to to find talent and cast to attack attach to different projects and so development is a very long process anyway so as a producer um, lockdown has actually been productive there are a lot of people okay. reading there are a lot of people that are eager to create and to sort of keep things moving along and unfortunately we're not is in full production in general okay. as we would like to be but things are still able to be progressing along Okay. Which, is which is encouraging. So thank you so much for this conversation. And thank you for having me. And I, I encourage, get out there and make movies, create content and just keep fighting the fight. And I'd say the most important thing is you need to find projects that you're passionate about because these are a marriage. You are on these projects for years, sometimes years. And so you have to be excited about doing them and passionate and just determined to tell the story and I think that that's incredibly important okay. thank you Marta it's been really thank lovely you. to participate thank with you your so festival much. I hope you have a wonderful festival bye